a golden thread and needles so fine. I'd weave a magic strand of rainbow design. thought of as such an old-fashioned instrument, I thought, I, I thought I'd kind of take you back to uh, over a hundred years ago when it was just the latest thing. The banjo swept American popular music just as rock and roll did a century later. Back in the 1840s, this was, oh, the, the greatest in all kinds of people in America, young and old, were learning how to play it, trying to. It was originally an African instrument, you know. Then just became popular here, and people like Stephen Foster made up songs about banjo on my knee. The sun so hot I froze to death, Susanna, don't you cry. Kind of imagine, if you can, what it must have been like long before there was any television, long before there was any radio and hi-fis. And maybe your family decided that times were just too tough and they were going to go out to that western land and so they took a banjo along with them to keep them company and it was a long trip might be months and months before they got where they were going whether it was Kansas or California and along the way they'd be repeating some of the old pop songs which they heard back in the east Oh, Susanna, that was at the top of the hit parade in 1848. So it's natural that the 49ers were all playing it on the way out. But it wasn't all so uh, happy. It's a hard job. Did you ever hear this song? Come all you Missouri girls, listen to my noise. Don't you go trust those Texas boys. If you do, your fortune will be Johnny Cake and Venison and Sassafras Tea. Johnny Cake and Venison and Sassafras Tea. They take you out to some live oak hill, leave you there against your will. Leave you alone out there on the plain, cause that is the way with the Texian. That is the way with the Texian. When they come a courtin', I'll tell you what they wear. An old leather coat all patched and bare. An old straw hat more brim than crown. A pair of dirty socks they wore the wind around. A pair of dirty socks they wore the wind around. They take you to a house with a huge log wall, but it ain't got no windows at all. 
clapboard roof and a punching floor. That's the way all Texas or. That's the way all Texas or. Brandy's brandy any way you mix it. But a Texan's a Texan any way you fix it. When other good folks have all gone to bed, the devil is a working in the Texian's head. The devil is a working in the Texian's head. Oh, I remember another song along that line. Oh, you can give marriage a whirl if you got some cash in your purse. But don't marry no one but a Texas gal, cause no matter what happens, she's seen worse. But I don't know, all my life I looked back uh, at this period of American history has just been a time when it was great. They were heroes going out doing dangerous things. And then reading the papers in the last couple of years, I suddenly realized that I had to turn everything all upside down. In the light of what's going on today, think of Rhodesia, where again, uh, people with uh, highly developed training, literacy, background, equipped with all kinds of technical tools, just marched in, took over big territory, said, aren't we heroic? Without uh, giving too much thought to the fact there were some human beings living there already. Here's one of the songs I found myself doing a double take on. Sing you a song, it will be a sad one Of trials and troubles and where first begun I left my dear family, my friends and my home To cross the wide mountains and deserts to roam We heard of Sioux Indians all out on the plain a killing poor drivers and burning their train. Killing poor drivers with arrow and bow. When captured by Indians, no mercy they'd show. We traveled three weeks till we came to the Platte. It's a river out in Nebraska. And spreading our blankets on the green grassy flat. Spreading our blankets on the green grassy ground. Our horses and mules were grazing all around. While taking refreshment, we heard a low yell. The whoop Two Indians coming out of the dell. We sprang to our rifles with a flash in each eye. Boys, says our brave leader, we'll fight till we die. They made a bold dash and came near to our train. The arrows fell round us like hail and like rain. We shot their bull chief at the head of his band. They made a wild yell and away they all ran. We traveled by day and we guarded by night. Till Aragon's mountains rose high in their might. And here at Pocahontas beside the clear stream, Our journey is ended in the land of our dream. Our journey is ended in the land of our dream. I won't say the fellow wrote the song wasn't brave. But a hundred years later, I think I look at that whole song and that whole period in a different light. 
I wish I knew one of the songs that maybe the Sioux Indians were singing about this strange group of people that are invading their country without a passport, without a buy a leave, doing whatever they wanted with their big thunder sticks. So on this program, I've invited a friend of mine to come and sing you some songs. She's of Indian background, born in, up in Canada, went to college down in Massachusetts. I met her about four years ago when a mutual friend, Pete Lafarge, introduced us. Pete's gone now, but his songs still keep on going, and I'm, I always remember him when I remember when I meet this young woman. Her name is Buffy St. Marie. She's a good singer, good songwriter, too. And, uh, well, we'll, I don't know any more than you do what the next program's gonna be. I wanna hear her, and maybe we'll swap some songs before the program's over. Well, Buffy, what do you want to sing first? Well, this is a song that I wrote not so much for myself to sing, but I was hoping for other people to sing, all those people who are perhaps justifiably proud for what their grandfathers and great-grandfathers have made of this land. This is called Welcome Immigrante, which means welcome immigrants. So welcome, welcome, emigrante, to my country, welcome home. Welcome, welcome, emigrante, to the country that I love. I am proud, I am proud, I am proud of my forefathers, and I say, they built this country, and they came from far away to a land they didn't know the same way you do, my friend. So welcome, welcome, emigrante, to my country, welcome home. I sing about their courage For they spoke a foreign language And they labored with their hands The same way you do, my friend So welcome, welcome, emigrante To my country, welcome home Welcome, welcome, emigrante To the country that I love I am And I sing about their patience For they spoke a foreign language And they labored with their hands And the work they did was lowly And they dirtied up their clothes They came from far away To a land they didn't know The same way you do, my friend So welcome, welcome Emigrante To my country Hear it sung around New York City. Yeah, I would think it would be, but I don't know if it is. Mm. I get to thinking sometimes that when I see people not helping uh, immigrant people, you know, who come to this country expecting what they expect of America and then receiving so very little help when they finally get here with all their hopes and dreams, that, that it's pretty silly for maybe a first or second or third generation American to be making fun of and refusing help to newly arrived immigrants when the fact is they haven't been here that long themselves. No. Remember, was it Will Rogers' famous old statement? But I didn't, I wasn't, my people didn't come over in the Mayflower, but they welcomed the boat. <laughs> yeah. They were there and met the boat. Mm -hmm. How long have you been writing songs? Oh, I've been writing them or making them up, let's see. I haven't been writing them very long, or very often. Uh, I've been making them up all my life. I've been playing on the guitar for about, oh, five or six years. When I was in school and college, I started. But um, 
I used to make them up in my head, and I wouldn't remember them very much. But now I can write them down a little. There are uh, so many things to write about. I, th I think people fail to realize that a person can have an equal amount of sympathy for both sides of a of a, a problem. Certainly, that song about welcome immigrante. Uh, doesn't, in my mind, clash with some of the songs that I've written about the first or original or Native Americans, if you want to call the Indian tribes. And I think that people fail to realize that there's a, a unique and very deep kind of patriotism that, that an Indian can feel that perhaps a non-Indian never, never can experience. And and yet, there's not only a patriotism, but there is a, a justified bitterness on the part of some Indians who have not only lost their lands in less than fair fights, but whose children are then forced to be sent away from them to go to schools far away from, from home and who learn things that aren't true and who learn a distorted or one-sided um, history of the United States. So often these Indian kids just grow up with the entirely wrong idea. And I would like very much to see the history books corrected so that, so that there's a, a, a justified amount of space given to the true history of the American Indians, which has never been told. I think that most Americans feel that, um, that the Indians lost because of fair fights and superior odds and superior weaponry. That's because that's the only side of the story that's been told. I'll sing you a song that tells a little of the other side. Now that your big eyes are finally open, Now that you're wondering how must they feel Meaning them that you've chased across America's movie screens Now that you're wondering how can it be real That the ones you've called colorful, noble and proud In your school propaganda They starve in their splendor You've asked for my comment, I simply will render. My country, tis of thy people, you're dying. Now that the longhouses breed superstition, you force us to send our toddlers away to your schools where they're taught to despise their traditions forbid them their languages then further say that american history really began when columbus set sail out of europe and stress that the nation of leeches that conquered this land are the biggest and bravest and boldest and best and yet where in your history books is the tale of the genocide basic to this country's birth of the preachers who lied how the bill of rights failed how a nation of patriots returned to their earth and where will it tell of the liberty bell as it rang with the thud over kins or mud and the brave uncle sam in alaska this year my country made for the West with her shivering children in zero degrees blankets for your land so the treaties attest 
Ah, well, blankets for land is a bargain indeed. And the blankets were those Uncle Sam had collected from smallpox disease, dying soldiers that day. And the tribes were wiped out. And the history books censored a hundred years of your statesmen have felt it's better this way yet a few of the conquered have somehow survived their blood runs the redder though genes have been paled from the grand canyon's caverns to craven sad hills the wounded the losers the robbed sing their tale from Los Angeles County to upstate New York. The white nation fattens while others grow lean. Ah, the tricked and evicted, they know what I mean. My country is of oh, thy people, you're dying. The past. It just crumbled, the future just threatens. Our lifeblood is shut up in your chemical tanks. And now here you come, bill of sale in your hand. And surprise in your eyes that we're lacking in thanks for the blessings of civilization you've brought us. The lessons you've taught us, the ruin you've wrought us. Oh, see what our trust in America's bought us. My country is all thy people, you're dying. Now that the pride of the sires receives charity, now that we're harmless and safe behind laws. Now that my life's to be known as your heritage. Now that even the graves have been robbed. Now that our own chosen way is a novelty. Hands on our hearts, we salute you, your victory. Choke on your blue, white, and scarlet hypocrisy. Pitying the blindness, for you've never seen that the eagles of war, whose wings lent you glory, they were never no more than carrion crows pushed the wrens from their nest stole their eggs, changed their story. The mockingbird sings it. It's all that she knows. Ah, what can I do? Say a powerless few with a lump in your throat and a tear in your eye. Can't you see that their poverty's profiting you? My country is all thy people, you're dying. Buffy, I don't know what a song I've got which can, won't sound pale by comparison with that, but I've been on a songwriting jag for the last year or so, and I found myself writing a whole whole batches of different kinds of songs and here's one made it up a few months back when my sister-in-law was burping her baby and uh, who knows maybe somebody out there if you have to burp a baby uh, this song might come in handy as long as I am singing I will sing you one one's for the baby that sucks his thumb and one's for the bubble that's sure to come as long as I am singing, I will sing you two. Two's for the tug of war that takes two. One's for the baby that sucks his thumb, and one's for the bubble that's sure to come. As long as I am singing, I will sing you three. 
Molly and me and the baby make three, two for the tug of war that take two. One's for the baby that sucks his thumb and one's for the bubble that's sure to come. As long as I am singing, I will sing you five. Five stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door. Molly and me and the baby make three, two for the tug of war that takes two. One's for the baby that sucks his thumb. One's for the bubble that's sure to come. Well, you can see you can go on until the bubble comes. As long as I am singing, I will sing you twelve. Twelve for the dozen want to roll to heaven. Eleven for the eleven want to roll past seven. Ten for the decimal system. Nine for the nine all dressed so fine. Eight for the eight that stood at the gate. Seven for the seven want to roll to heaven. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five stayed alive. Four for the four that stood at the door. Molly and me and the baby make three. Two for the tug of war that takes two. <laughs> one's for the baby that sucks his thumb. And one's for the bubble that's sure to come. <laughs> I don't suppose they're ever gonna make the hit parade. <laughs> but I don't think songs have to make the hit parade. If it gets sung by some bubble, bubble burping parent, why, it'll be satisfy me. That's like, that's like, you know, uh, I was, I'm glad to see that now and then somebody will remember that things like jump rope, jump rope rhymes are, are one of the most alive part of the folk tradition that you can find, you know. Kids half the time don't even know what they're saying and my heavens, I think if I thought back to my jump roping days, I could probably, with not too much effort, come up with about 20 jump rope rhymes, so don't ask me to do it now. <laughs> and ball bouncing things. Yeah. You've got a strange instrument here. I don't think I can hold my curiosity any longer. I'd mm. like to see what it sounds like. All right. This is a mouth bow and mouth bows are found all over the world in different primitive countries. I think that any, any, uh, in any situation where you have hunters, sooner or later the musician in the tribe is going to figure out that you can make music with a hunting bow. See, that's what it is. It's a, I don't know if the light will catch this. It's a string right up here. And this is just like a child's bow. And I have lots of these, and some are big and some are small. And one's so big, I think it'd, it'd really take the arm of a baseball player to bend it. Because when you play it, you hold it up to your mouth like this. And you uh, move your mouth like you would with a Jew's harp. See, and change the cavity of your mouth. And you pick on it with a stick, or I use a little guitar pick here. And then, if you want to get fancy, you bend it. You bend the bow by moving your arm, see, like this. Hey, two notes out of one string. Uh-huh. And you can get just about any note you want. You can get high ones. And you get low ones. And what you're getting is you're getting the actual sound of the string. See, it's not quite so loud when your mouth isn't up to it. But with the overtones. And then you get the overtones by changing your mouth, changing the shape of your mouth. Can you sing the song with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be as loud as it would be if I had a gourd on one end. In some tribes, you find... Uh, I'm not, I don't mean just Indian tribes. I mean, these have been found in... Borneo, New Guinea, Africa. they have been found in Africa, yeah, and among North American Indian tribes. They're pretty much extinct now. And they're found in South America. Big, great, big, tall ones that you have to hold like a big double bass, you know. Yeah, it's good for songs. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Will your horse carry double Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe? Will your horse carry double Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe? Will your horse carry double Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe? Don't mind the weather when the wind don't blow. Hop up, my ladies, two in a row. Hop up, my ladies, two in a row. Hop up, my ladies, two in a row. Don't mind the weather when the wind don't blow. came back from the, a folk festival in Helsinki in Finland. 
and it was surprising how much the Helsinki Folk Festival was, like Newport or any of the other big folk festivals here. They had, they all had Gibson and Martin guitars and the same all kinds of banjos, you know, the, the banjos that you find here. And they were singing a lot of the same songs. And at the end of the folk festival, they all sat, stood up and held hands and sang, we shall overcome. Oh, no. <laughs> they really <laughs> did. But one thing that I was interested to see, besides their exhibition of candelas, which is something like a dulcimer, sort of a triangle shaped table hammered harp. table harp. That's a good word for it, yeah. And uh, one thing, one fellow was playing spoons. You know, and that's something that not many people do anymore. And you're slapping with the mouth ball. That reminded me of that. Spoons. Ah, oh, there's a lot of good homemade music. Uh, is there some song that I can help you on? I got a banjo and well, guitar. let's see. Um, why don't you think of one, and I'll help you. How'd that be? Uh, dun, dun, dun. Have you got one? Otherwise, otherwise, I know, I know. Let's sing a song. You help me sing, do a song about, this is a, a, not a very long song. It's about farmers and the disappearing way of life. Here we've talked about the disappearing way of the Indian life, and we're talking about immigrants who've come in. And yet a lot of those people were farmers, and, and that old way of life, I think, is disappearing. And this is a song about, about that way of life. It's called Men of the Fields. Men of the fields, men of the valleys, men of the seasons and the soil, strong hearts and hands, molding the lands, all over earth they toil. Down in the fields, nine in the morning, days work, three hours done. children. Love means each other every day. Strong hearts and hands molding the lands all over earth they toil. It's an unusual one. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 1939 I was with three other kids we were then and we toured New York State uh, had a little puppet show, and I used to go out and stand in front of the stage and sing songs. Uh, we didn't have any manager to book us. We'd go into a town and see what was going on in town, maybe a church social or a clam bake or a block party. And then we'd go put on our puppet show and pass the hat. And this uh, New York State is mostly dairy country, you know. So I had a song. <laughs> The farmer comes to town with his wagon broken down. The farmer is the man that feeds them all. If you'll only look and see, I think you will agree that the farmer is the man that feeds them all. The farmer is the man, the farmer is the man, lives on credit till the fall. With the interest rate so high, it's a wonder he don't die, for the banker is the one that gets it all. You see right where you are. Well, the merchant says he's broke, and the banker's up in smoke, but the farmer is the man that feeds them all. And the butler and the cook, they go strolling by the brook, but the farmer is the man that feeds them all. The farmer is the man, the farmer is the man, lives on credit till the fall. And his pants are wearing thin, his condition it's a sin, he's forgot that he's the man that feeds them all. He doesn't know, I guess the, better, the rest of us better worry. Ah, uh, tell you what, before we have just a few more songs, let me get out my 12-string guitar here, so I'll see you in a few minutes.
Back in 1942, I was a member of a good platoon. We were on maneuvers in the Louisiana one night by the light of the moon. The captain told us to ford a river, and that's how it all begun. We were knee deep in the big muddy, and the damn fool said to push on. The sergeant said, sir, are you sure this is the best way back to the base? Sergeant, go on, I forded this river a mile above this place. It'll be a little soggy, but just keep slogging, we'll soon be on dry ground. We were waist deep in the big muddy, the damn fool said to push on. The sergeant said, with all this equipment, no man will be able to swim. Sergeant, don't be a nervous, Nelly, the captain said to him. All we need is little determination. Men, follow me, I'll lead on. We were neck deep in the big muddy, and the damn fool said to push on. All at once the moon clouded over. We heard a gurgling cry. A few seconds later, the captain's helmet was all that floated by. The sergeant said, turn around, men, I'm in charge from now on. And we just made it out of the big muddy with the captain dead and gone. We stripped and dived and found his body stuck in the old quicksand. I guess he didn't know that the water was deeper than the place he'd once before been. Another stream had joined the big muddy about a half mile from where we'd gone. We were lucky to escape from the big muddy when the damn fool said to push on. Well, I'm not gonna draw any moral, I'll leave that for yourself. Maybe you're still walking and you're still talking, you'd like to keep your health. But every time I read the papers, that old feeling comes on. We're way steep in the big muddy, the big fool says to push on. Waist deep in the big muddy, the big fool says to push on. Waist deep in the big muddy, the big fool says to push on. Waist deep in the big muddy, the big fool says to push on. Ah, that's a good one. Well, you never know what'll happen with a song when you make it up. I always say, writing a song is like having a baby, I guess, or a child. Now, I've never had a baby. You will someday. But uh, at any rate, you have a baby, and it, and it leaves home, and then it goes out in the world, and you never know what'll happen to it. Well, I got a baby-type song here. Not a song for babies. It's, this is a song about some damn fools, too. That song's about some damn fools who can't see their hands in front of their faces. This is about some others. Little wheels spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Merry Christmas, jingle bells. Christ is born and the devil's in hell. Hearts, they shrink, buckets swell. Everybody know and nobody tell. Little wheel. Spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Oh, the sins of Caesar's men, cry the pious citizens, who petty thieve the five and tens, and the big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel spin and spin, big wheel turn around and around. Little wheel 
spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Blame the angels, blame the fates, blame the Jews or your sister Kate. Teach your children a who to hate, and the big wheel, turn around and around. Little wheel, spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Little wheel, spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Turn your back on weeds you've hoed, silly sinful seeds you've sowed. Add your straw to the camel's load. Pray like hell when the world explodes. Little wheel, spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Little wheel, spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Swing your girl, fiddler say, later on the piper pay. Do si do, swing and sway, dead will dance on judgment day. Little wheel. Spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Little wheel, spin and spin, big wheel, turn around and around. Hmm. Good golly. It casts a spell, it's kind of magic. Buffy, I don't know. How you feel? I've enjoyed this hour just swapping songs. I know maybe you out there realize too that Buffy's got a wealth of songs which we haven't got time to sing, stories, and there are a whole batch of things I wanted to ask her about I didn't get around to. I was want to to find out more about American Indian life today, what it was like. Just in the last few months, I've been doing some reading, and I found some things absolutely fascinated me. For example, this fellow Sequoia, maybe you've heard me talk about him already, but uh, he was a great American genius. And uh, he was the fellow that invented the Cherokee alphabet. And if you can bring the camera up close, I thought some of the readers might like to see this. This was invented about 145 years ago, almost 150 years ago, by a man who had no schooling, no training in the formal sense. Like other Cherokees, he knew the woods and the animals and the winds and the skies and the stars. But uh, when his father told him about the white men's writing, Sequoia decided that he would like to invent a writing too. He didn't just want to learn the white man's writing, he wanted to have an Indian writing. So he made up a writing that was so good that the whole Cherokee nation learned it. Within a few years, the rank and filers, not just a few learned men, but the whole rank and file could read this writing. See if you come up real close. I'll hold it still so you can see what his writing was like. Well, yeah, the people who know about those things, who know about uh, language and alphabets, they say that's a, a very good, usable, sophisticated, but usable uh, alphabet. Yeah. And uh, it's not died out either. No. Today in Oklahoma, there are 10 or 12,000 Cherokees who know how to read it. They've got newsletters in the language. And if you go into the, uh, the town where Sequoia lived the latter part of his life, where his little cabin is a shrine, you'll see signs in the restaurants with this language on it. Well, we get that too, the Crees. Uh, we have a, a language, I mean, a, an alphabet that's different from... Uh, the Cree people are up in... Where, Canada. Mar Canada. Manitoba? Yeah. Oh, there are some in, in Manitoba. I'm from yeah. the Plains Cree tribe, which is in Saskatchewan. There so are Swampy me. Cree and Woodland Cree in the east, yeah. in the in the northeast. And then there's, there are Crees all across Canada, but then the Plains Cree, which is my tribe, is in uh, Saskatchewan. And we have um, a, a, an unusual system. Oh, we'll get into a long thing about Cree language, which is always... Oh, it's very strange. I'll, I'll whet your imagination. Cree doesn't have uh, only three persons, I, him, and you. We have four persons. Who's the four? Say, well, I won't tell you that. That's a long story. <laughs> and then we don't think in terms of things being masculine and feminine, like Spanish or French or yeah. Italian. We think of in terms of things being animate and inanimate, or having, having life or not having life, being mm -hmm. active or not active. Huh? And we got an alphabet, too, but I don't think we originated ours. Oh, be darned. Oh, me. Can you say a few words in that language so I get the idea of what it sounds like? What does that mean? 
that means uh, I would like to wish you uh, goodness. Say it again. Misa. 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 Miska mig. Miska mig. Nte. Misa. Miska mig. Nte. Puevite. Nte. Puevite. Oh, I wish I could remember it. No, write it down for you in Mr. English. <laughs> I don't know about you. I hope that all these different languages don't just get all wiped out and and in just one big blur, the uh, human race all become alike. You remember Mark Twain said it's it's difference of opinion that makes horse races. It would be it's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing to see all the differences between people and. In a sense, that's what this rainbow quest is all around. We have time for another song or so? Uh, let's see if we can swap some verses and maybe play some mouth bowl. And we'll, right. we'll just uh, see how many verses we know. And anybody out there that knows the chorus of a song called Cindy, uh, help out in the chorus too. Maybe after the program has to go off the air, you'll think of some new verses yourself. Now, let's see if we can tune. Nope. It's got a tuning peg on it, by the way. Some of the old-fashioned ones do, and some don't. Okay. Get impatient, you know. This is like a baseball game where the pitcher has to to uh, wind up and get the ball all just right. <laughs> We're set now. Here comes the pitch. <laughs> Well, I know another verse 
like and sing a couple more or so. But a thing I very much like is to hear that old mouth bone. Get along home. Thank you. 